attention, attention, attention. Brave are those who give their time to little children. You have improved our washroom training us. You have planned carefully for our nutrition in school. Drop out children are back to school through you. Girl child is scared for through your idea of making usable parts. How wonderful you are. Karamoja subregion has for decades bore the brunt of brutal conflicts, harsh climate, high unemployment levels, and the vast majority of people in the area live in abject poverty. Numerous government and non-government programs have been rolled out in the area with the aim of setting the region on the path to prosperity. However, Karamoja still suffers from some of the worst educational achievements and performance in Uganda, owing largely to poverty and the protracted conflict that marginalized the region and stalled its development for decades. These factors have greatly contributed to low enrollment and poor quality education. In a bid to reverse this, the Adventist Development Relief Agency, with funding from ADRA Denmark, is implementing a project codenamed Children's Rights to Education and Advocacy for Karamoja Creek, through which they are advocating for increased attendance of children in schools and enhanced retention. Currently, ADRA is piloting the project in 10 schools of Kotido district. Our main uh, target is to get children out of the villages and they are enrolled in schools. So in so doing, we would want to first of all uh, uh, tackle the problem of poor attitude of the parents, also work at, to look at engaging stakeholders to see how best we can support each other to ensure that the children are brought out of the villages to schools. And then at the end of the day, uh, the big, some of the things that keep them home is poverty. So in so doing, we are trying to uh, engage parents in income generating activities to ensure that they have money uh, to be able to afford scholastic materials and other things. We've been able to do several activities in schools, building capacity, capacity building of their leaders, uh, especially the structures in the schools, the school management committee, PTAs. And the schools have been, having been closed for a long time, we thought guidance and counseling is one aspect that should be given prominence. So we also had the capacity building training for the senior men and senior women teachers and their head teachers because those are the core people responsible for guidance and counseling. Beyond that, we went out to the communities, we were able to support uh, community-based organizations, uh, had the training to build their capacity, capacities to be able to go out in the field, carry out community mobilization and sensitization to ensure that parents begin to appreciate the value of education because uh, enrollment is very low uh, compared to the statistics. I think the population of the children that go to school and those that don't, it's just, it's just at uh, below 11% showing the magnitude of it, of how it is. Lokitelebo Primary School in Lokitela Kotido District is one of the pilot schools where the Crick project is being implemented. Here, advocacy groups aimed at empowering children advocate for their rights to education have been set up. The main aim of forming advocacy club was to, was to ensure that girls have learning in a safe environment without any problem. That is the reason as to why we went so far to the extent of learning how to make reusable pads, whereby in case of menstruation abruptly, we could help the girls, giving them such that they learn without any problem. The school headmaster says the general enrollment has increased here. As a school now, we are facing a lot of challenges. Uh, the parents, since children uh, have nothing to eat at home, they have decided to send most children of uh, under five to school just for the purpose of getting something to eat in the school. Hadra, as a partner, has helped our school by providing the, the tools 
for agriculture and now as a school we have also got uh, the seeds which were procured and we have planted uh, the nursery beds at the same time we have transplanted even others as I talk now the school is able to get some uh, vegetables so children get the now green greens at least to supplement. Lack of flexible alternative education opportunities have been cited as another challenge that compounds the value attached to education in Karamoja, especially for girls by some communities. Like now some of us, you are willing to study but no money for, for paying the school fees. The project has also witnessed the setting up of model vegetable gardens in schools and this is aimed at creating sustainability. Since Adra was not there, we did not see this benefit, which we can benefit nowadays. We thank that program to continue supporting us and adding these seeds and garden tools also. In Kotido town, we meet Grace, not real names, another beneficiary of the advocacy projects rolled out by ADRA Uganda. During the two-year-long COVID lockdown that saw schools closed countrywide, Grace is among the many girls who got pregnant. In this lockdown, I got pregnant. When I got pregnant, I was at, in town. I stayed in town from, from my auntie's place. When my mother had expected me to come back home to the village, I went back home. She says she felt unwelcome at home and thought her chances of continuing with education had been shattered. My brother said before me that you, you are not longer my sister. Jacinta, you are not my sister, he repeated twice. He said, what have I said? I said that I'm not your sister. He said, yes, I don't want shame, you better go away from me. Now, now, when you are moving from the center, they say, you see the sister of Dennis is there, she is pregnant. She is carrying a bastard child, you see she is there. Now a mother, Grace is among the glimmer of hope, thanks to the advocacy works of the Creek Project, which has made her feel welcome in school and society. And they, uh, when I was at school also, these people of Adra used to come to me also to visit me at school. We, we, I was even some act of a drama, also the act of a drama as a mother. We came to the district there, we presented our, our drama from there. The people of Adra helped me with 20,000. I was able to buy clothes of my shell that, I, that I'm carrying now with my shell. And of course, Adra, as, as you implement this project, the teachers say the nation is because we, we are. At this fireside chat organized by ADRA and attended by numerous players in the education sector of Kotido district, ideas were sought on how best education uptake and enrollment can be improved in the area. We look at the parents' sensitization uh, on the importance of education must be done. Then we look at learned people, be role models. We also thought that it would be very important at this point to enforce the education ordinance. The ordinance is there and if it is enforced, maybe we shall see a change in the attitude of our parents towards education. We, as we children, some of us we came from poor families and our parents cannot afford to provide us with the scholastic materials. For the girls especially, some girls for the first time experiencing this and they don't get anything to support them in schools so they leave studies and they drop away. We are all aware that Karamoja and Kotido as well is among us, the nine districts of Karamoja that is lagging behind in terms of the literacy rates. So as a district we will avail the necessary resources uh, as far as maybe transport is concerned. I want in a special way to thank ADRA for accepting to touch the most vulnerable. You have always participated in different ways uh, to support the poor and the most distressed people of this country. Another grim statistic which was unearthed 
was that many learners were attending school, not for the sole purpose of education, but rather to get meals. And this has been exacerbated by the hunger crisis in the area. Our enrollment stands at 34,456 children. From this enrollment, you find out the, the enrollment at the lower classes are more than the one of the upper classes. The lower mean from P1 to P3. You have a, a, a school that has 400 children of P1 only. A school like Nakapenmuru, you go to Kaiseri, you go to Rengen, primary schools. The enrollment at the law is very, very high. Uh, the contribution is one. As we had said earlier, the district is hit by famine. Most of these children go to school in order to get some survival. And you, you, find, you find the young ones. At, at the ECD centers also go to the school. As, I, as a district, we have created the ECD centers per, per school so that these young ones are kept at site. So you find class of like P1 to P3, the enrollment is overwhelming. The classes are full. You find a, a teacher standing in front of a class in front of 400 children. Indeed, the schools we visited, this was the case during break and lunch time. We are serving lunch for children. What they are getting is really not enough because we have more children in the school and uh, the children that we have, we are serving today is about 980 children. We started serving by midday, that is by 12 noon and up to now we are still serving. Uh, in the morning, learners come and we count them. We mess a food which are enough for those ones we have counted, which we have counted. But you find out that later some learners report after we have finished counting. So the food that we have measured becomes less for those ones who have come late. But now time for serving, it becomes difficult to identify which ones were counted and which ones were not, were not counted. The Creek Project is also equipping women with knowledge on how to start income generating activities with the aim of increasing income and productivity at household level. The 30 members of Kokoria Women's Group are among the beneficiaries. Hadra's given has a more capacity that you can also sell other things for the, for the, for the survival of your family. But Hadra has educated them we can also empower as women to do something, not to depend on men or their family. For example, we can also buy clothes for ourselves, educate our children, and avoid this corruption at, at home. Rape, like rape when, like, when a child is young, when like a child is young being raped by the community members, Adra has taught that, them a lot, of, a lot of skills as it has started. And we have stayed, we have stayed with the Hadra for a long time since we started. And these are the benefits which we have got from Hadra. Like outreach, going to educate the community members about HIV heads and these things of insecurity. And even Hadra has educated us in many ways, like savings. Like in the home, you can also sell something, at least in a day you save something for the survival. <laughs> Adra Uganda believes that if communities are empowered, aware of their rights, able to articulate issues concerning their communities, they will advocate community issues to duty bearers, then relevant decision makers will find solutions to the needs and concerns raised. We empower the societies around uh, to advocate for the things they feel or they should have in their own communities. So in summary, that's what the project has done and has achieved, and that's the challenge and still the journey that awaits us beyond what we've done. Okay. Okay.